What's going on everybody in this episode? We are going to be doing absolutely nothing to do with React. We're actually going to be setting up GraphQL on our backend, but what would you expect more than that in a React series? I mean, let's be real. So we are eventually going to connect to this GraphQL endpoint in probably the next episode, or if you're lucky, maybe even this episode. So let's get started. We are using Django. I might do this with another backend programming language in this series. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the series, I'm just kind of going with the flow this time around just to see how it goes, see what people are interested in and what you guys want to see. So getting that feedback, if you want to know a different programming language, definitely drop it in a comment in the comment section below. Most likely it would be Node if we decide to do another backend. Now, as a quick note before you jump into this too much, this is going to basically assume the prerequisite of already having models and data defined in the database. If you need those basics, you can check out our earlier videos in this series where we set up Django and created a very basic REST API. We're gonna use the same models and same data that's already in our database so we don't have to recreate all of that. So once we create our GraphQL endpoint, we'll be able to just retrieve the data we already have. So the goal is to get to a page like this for our backend where we can run this and get our customer data and be very specific about what kind of information we want. Right now we're not dealing with any nested data but we could add that in fairly easily. We could also grab a customer by name with customer by name and then passing in name being equal to Slack as an example. And running that will get just that piece of data back. And then I would like to take this data and display it on our React application instead of using the data from the SpaceX GraphQL endpoint that we used in the previous video. We're going to use a tool called Graphene and from their docs on this page, you can go through the installation and basic tutorial where I'm going to basically go through the same stuff, but instead of using the examples that they have here with their models for like this cookbook, we're going to use our customer data, which we defined in a previous video. So if you want to get the code as it stands, you can go to this repo and then go to the commits and you will want to start with the registration commit. You can find all of the code right here, or you could check out this commit hash. So to start, we're going to first be inside of our virtual environment. So you have the VENV over here and we're going to get a package. So we'll say pip install graphene dash Django. Now, if this is your first time, it'll install. I already went through this, so requirement already satisfied is what shows up for me. And then inside of settings, we will need to add a few things. So first, down in our installed apps, we will add it to this list. So we'll just go in here and say graphene dash Django and put a comma. We also need to make sure Django contrib static files is in there, which is required for graphical, which we do have in the installed apps here. So we should be good to go. Now we're also going to define a schema and we have to say where that location is. We will define that in our settings. And the schema basically describes the structure of our data. So this is step one before we can start asking for what we want. So let's go back to our settings and we will define where this schema is located. I'm just going to place it here. So we will create graphene and this is going to be assigned a dictionary with one key called schema and this is going to be assigned the value customers, which is the name of our app. So taking a look at our file structure, we are going to be within this customers app. And inside of there, we're going to have a schema file with a schema object. So far, so good. All we need to do now is we need to define that file. So this is going to be kind of similar to how serializers allows us to create a REST API. The schema file is going to do that same thing, but for GraphQL. So we'll go into customers and say new file, and this will be called schema.py. Cool, and this is what we're gonna be working on for a few moments, so I'll close out of that. And here we'll say import graphene, and from graphene underscore Django, import Django object type. And then we'll import our model, which is going to be where the data comes from. So from customers.models, import customer. And now we will create a class called customer type. This describes our data type and it's going to inherit from Django object type. And inside of here, we're going to have a nested class called meta, which will have the model that we want called customer and the fields that we are interested in, which I'm just going to have all of them displayed with two underscores 
all two underscores. Very similar again to the serializers, it's going to follow the same exact style where we define a class and then a meta class for the model and the fields. Now we need to define one more class in here and that is our query class, so class query, which will inherit from graphene dot object type. Also kind of off topic, but whenever I install a new package, I like to update the requirements.txt. Now inside of here, we're going to define which endpoints we want. So this is what was being typed in to this here. So I have customer by name. The one we used earlier was all customers. So this is what we're going to define. And this one is not going to take anything passed in as an argument. So let's try and define that and it's going to be all customers, and this is going to be graphene.list, and pass in this class that we just created, customer type. And then we will create a function inside of this class, so it's going to be indented right here, resolve all customers. And this will have two parameters defined here called root and info. And all we're going to do is return all the customers. So we'll just say customer.objects.all. Oh, that was a lot, but we're getting pretty close. Inside of our settings, we are referring to some schema object, which we need to create. And we will do that outside of this class definition. So let's define that schema object. And this is going to be an instance of graphene.schema, passing in our query class that we defined here. So that is the structure. And you can follow most of that from their documentation. So it's not like I just made that up. You know, there is a system to this. The last thing we do need to do is actually add the URL for the GraphQL endpoint. So let's head over to urls.py and create a new path. Path here, and it's going to be GraphQL. In the view that's going to be displayed after this, we're actually going to import. So from graphene underscore Django dot views import graph ql view so right there and that's the view we're going to render graph ql view dot as view and then we can say that we want to use the graphical user interface so graph iql is set to true that should be everything if i'm not mistaken i think there is one issue we might run into and that will be shown when we run this application. So if we say Python manage py run server, we'll get an error, no module named graphene Django. Rip. This is actually just a mistake on my part. So settings.py, this should be underscore Django. That was not the error I was actually expecting. It's this one, cannot import name force text from Django utils.encoding. This has something to do with an incompatibility with Django 4, which we are using, and this is really designed for Django 3. There was some change in the naming of things, so we just need to change one thing in our settings to get this to work. Up at the top of our settings file, this force text was renamed to force stir. So what we're going to do is just import that and then rename it as force text. So it's going to look like this and we will need to import Django, so import Django. So when we invoke force text, we're actually going to invoke this new force stir. And that fixes it. And you see we're no longer getting an error in the terminal. Hopefully in newer versions, you guys don't run into this problem. Shout out to this answer here, which gave that solution. Now, since our server is working, we should be able to open our server and visit the GraphQL endpoint. We get the graphical interface and you can hit this docs button up here in the corner and that's going to show your different endpoints. So you can see we have the query which is the root of all queries and then we have the fields all customers and this is the type that it's expecting with these fields. So that will help us build out what we want to query for. So we will design our query by first creating curly braces and then saying all customers and then inside of another set of curly braces we will say what fields we want which will be ID, name, and industry. No commas here and no colons either. So once we got that, we can hit run and we get all of our data back. Now again, you can modify this, removing any of these properties that you are not interested in. And as mentioned, we don't currently have nested data, so I'm not able to show that, but hopefully we'll add that here soon. 
Now all we would do is have to take this path here and use that from our React application. We're gonna continue building on this in the next video, so definitely stay tuned. We're going to connect from the front end in the following video, and then after that, I want to talk a little bit about nested data and relationships. Really looking forward to the content that is coming and definitely would appreciate it if you give my channel a subscribe. That's how I know you love this content as well as slapping the like button and watching through this series. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out and I'll see you in the next one.